all the trouble that I got into in the army, and by trouble I mean Article 15, fucking extra duty, 45, 45, all the fun shit, was for underage drinking. Because two weeks after I graduated high school, I was in basic training, which meant for my first duty station in South Korea, I was underage the whole time I was there. Uh, and at Fort Hood, I was underage until we deployed. So I was actually a combat veteran with a purple heart before I could legally get a drink in the United States. Which is an interesting point in itself. Uh, but this story is about a time that I narrowly slipped the noose at Fort Hood and arguably took the slipping part a little too seriously. So this story happened in early 2005, so I'm 19 at the time, uh, and I'm 38 now, so it was literally half a lifetime ago. And it happened at a club. I don't remember the name of the club, but it was the place that we used to go to before Starlight was a thing. Uh, I want to say that it was on Stan Schluter Loop, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, the setup of the club was this giant dance floor, uh, and there was bars on either side, and then there was like a raised area that had a bar in the middle, and there was like a hangout area up there. Outside there was a parking lot, uh, and then across the street there was a gravel overflow parking lot. And the street was a three-lane street where it had like the, the two lanes, and then the middle one was like the median slash turn lane. So we would go to that club every weekend, because before dating apps, this was like your best option to pick up chicks. Uh, and like I said, I'm 19, so I'm not supposed to drink, but there's ways around things, and we had a system. So what we would do is when we showed up to a place, we would split into two groups, where one group was the people over 21, the other group was people under 21. Uh, the first group would go in, we'd wait about five or 10 minutes, follow them in, uh, so it looked like we weren't together. And I don't know if it's still the same in clubs, but I would hazard a guess that it is where if you're over 21, you get a bracelet. If you're under 21, you get nothing. Or you get a different colored bracelet. You get X's on your hands or some combination of those things. So if it was the X's on the hands, we would immediately go to the bathroom and wash that shit off. We'd find our buddies and we'd go back into the bathroom in pairs. And the guy who was over 21 would pull off his bracelet, leave it in the stall. We'd go in behind him. We'd put it on. Uh, and then a couple minutes later, the guy who took off his bracelet would go up to the front and be like, somebody on the dance floor took my bracelet. Ah. Uh, it was a foolproof system, until it wasn't, which is what happened the night that I'm going to talk about. So we go to the club, we do the system, I get the bracelet, I put it on my left hand, but unbeknownst to me, left hand means that you're the DD, uh, and I'm going to, into the upper bar, and the first couple times I go there, everything's fine, but like the third time I go there, the bartender's like, are you the DD? I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? And she's like, the left hand means that you're the DD. I'm like, yeah, I'm the DD. She's like, can I see your ID? I was like, oh, let me go get it. So I walk down, uh, into the dance floor, I squirrel my way through the crowd, and I go into the very back corner, as far away uh, from that upper bar as I can get. And I'm sitting there just trying to wait out the heat, but I see the bartender talk to one of the bouncers and then point to where I'm at. I'm like, fuck. The bouncer walks down through, he comes up to me, and he's like, let me see your ID. And I show it to him, and he's like, come with me. And he hands me my ID back. And at this point, I should say that I had already seen guys getting busted for underage drinking at this bar because the entrance to this place was this ramp that had a concrete pad, uh, and they would pull guys off to the side, and as you're waiting to get in, you can't help but hear. And they'd be asking questions like, what unit are you in? Who's your commander? Who's your first sergeant? Who's your platoon sergeant? And these are all things that I don't want to tell these people. So I decide, since this guy was dumb enough to give me my ID back, I'm fucking bolting. So I start walking as fast as I can. I get by the bouncer. I get halfway through the parking lot before this guy even hits the front door. And when he does, he says, hey! And I just bolt at that point. And it just so happened that the road was clear enough, just long enough for me to run through before traffic came from both sides. So now I'm sitting in that gravel overflow parking lot. I look back. I see a couple of guys walking off the ramp. And behind me is a housing development. So I just run up into that fucking thing. I find a bush and I hide in it for like 10 minutes. And I don't hear anything. And then I slowly just displace down the road about half a mile because I'm convinced that the fucking SWAT team is after one guy underage drinking at this bar. And I eventually get to uh, the back end of like this like sushi bar place and I call a dude uh, that's back at the barracks to see if he can come pick me up. And this guy was like 30. He was not about that fucking club life, but he was part of the E4 mafia. Uh, and I'm like, hey man, I'm at this bar. I need you to come pick me up. I got caught for underage drinking. I think they're after me. And he's like, you think they're after you, huh? And I'm like, yeah, man, it's fucking crazy. So he's like, yeah, man, I'll come get you. Just sit tight. So I find a dumpster. I hide behind that. About 15 minutes later, I see his car pull up. I walk out behind the dumpster. He opens the door, and he's like, hurry up, man. Get in, get in, get in. And I run in there. He's like, get your head down. I just had to pass through a police barrier. They were looking for you. I'm like, really? He's like, no, you fucking idiot. No one is looking for one jackass underage drinking in a club. I'm like, well, you don't know that. He's like, yes, I do. And we drive back by the club, and he slows down. And all those guys are just sitting there on the ramp. And he's like, see, nothing. I'm like, well, they could be regrouping. And he's like, yeah, they're regrouping to plan for the manhunt of the fucking century. Uh, and then we ride for a little while longer. And he's like, you know, it's, it's good that you didn't get caught and tell those guys your information. But it's not fucking Mission Impossible. You didn't have to spend any time in a bush. And I'm like, well, agree to disagree. So we get back to Hood. 
Nothing came of that night. We still use that system. We just were a little bit more careful about what arm we put the band on.